Hi, I'm John Wilder, the historian for Aleppo Shrine. Uh, today I'd like to talk to you about what I like to call the basic setup. Um, at, with my work at the Shrine, as, many, as happens with many lodges, we often get items returned by the families. Um, and also in our searching online trying to reclaim some history, you see, end up seeing a lot of things for sale. Um, and a lot of the common items are often mislabeled or people don't know what they are or they think they're very, very rare. Um, but I won't talk about values because that's not what this is about. I just want to help you identify some of the basic items that almost every Mason would have had. So when a Mason is raised, he goes through three degrees. We're all third degree Masons. We're all equal in the third degree. I always uh, like to chuckle if you remember the movie National Treasure when they're in the basement of the church and he's reading one of the gravestones and says, oh, he's a third degree Mason in the Blue Lodge, as if it's something exciting, but that's what we all are. Um, you can go on to different degrees and, and further your knowledge, but we're all still equal in the third degree. So the first thing you'll, you'll receive as a Master Mason is your apron. It's usually stored in a tube. This is actually mine. <clears throat> it's a white lambskin apron. It's a presentation piece. You wear it in your three degrees. And then traditionally, you wouldn't wear it again until you were buried with it. Um, although a lot of times family members don't know that, or if you fall out of uh, attendance with your lodge and you don't share that information with your family, so you see a lot of these come up. The interesting thing is most of them, not all of them, will have the information of the lodge and the owner. So here, where I was originally raised in Level Lodge, uh, it's in Shrewsbury, my full name, and the date of my three degrees, and it's signed by the Worshipful Master at the time and the Lodge Secretary at the time. So that's the first thing. Uh, many lodges will also give as a presentation piece um, a lodge Bible. Um, this is a small personalized Masonic Bible. This belonged to my great uncle, Brother uh, Daniel Edward Wilder, who presented this to me uh, shortly before I took my, my degrees. Um, so we'll usually have um, either the regular square encompasses with the name, sometimes the Scottish Rite, bodies gave these out. I've seen a few from the shrine. Uh, so you'll see these a lot. You'll also see, at least in Massachusetts, the three small blue uh, Claudie books, which I forgot to bring with me today, which were an introductory to the uh, information, the allegory, the symbolism behind the three degrees. Now, if the Mason went on to join other appendant bodies, such as the Scottish Rite, you'll have the Scottish Rite 32nd degree jewel. This is the one of the most common ones that you'll come across in uh, Massachusetts. A couple of the different valleys uh, and different consistories had ones that looked just like this, but oftentimes they're found missing the, uh, the ribbon or fallen uh, off the holder. So you'll see just this part offered as a watch fob, offered as a as a important jewel, um, but you come uh, across quite a few of these. Some of the older ones uh, were sterling silver. This one is about late 1800s, sometimes found in the box. And then in the past few years, they've redesigned them again, and they look like that. Although in between, there were some that were just the, uh, just the jewel without the ribbon. So you'll see those along with, of course, the diplomas from each degree. Those are what every member who joins the Scottish Rite gets. It's their 32nd degree jewel. Throughout the country, of course, there are different, uh, different styles and different opportunities, um, <clears throat> different pieces that are presented. In other parts of the country, they would also have the flat pillbox caps, which were black with a gold eagle on them. If they join the York Rite uh, <clears throat> and went all the way through to Commandery, you'll f often find the Malta Jewel, from the Order of Malta, which is given to every person who goes through commandery, a lot of times you'll find these listed as mourning or remembrance jewels from the Grand Army of the Republic, which was a organization of Civil War veterans. And this dates back to one historian who referenced it in a memorabilia collector's book back in the 50s or 60s. 
and you've seen the Philistines ever since. That's not what they are. They are from the commandery of Knights Templar. You'll also sometimes see the Red Cross Jewel, uh, which was usually only given to those who went on to become a uniformed member. But those, uh, most recently we saw those identified as World War I German Iron Crosses. And then of course, if the member uh, went on to join the shrine, you'll have a plain candidate's presentation fez, uh, either in uh, embroidery or with uh, bullion thread. This one is uh, a fairly modern one, about 1980s. Rule of thumb, at least with Aleppo's, is the smaller the sphinx head, the older the fez. So the really early ones from about 1900 have a one about a third of the size of that one. Um, but those are just some of the items that you come across um, that every mason will have, as I mentioned, across, uh, along with the various certificates and diplomas from each body. Um, a lot of them don't have a uh, monetary value, but they are of significance to the mason and to his family. Uh, so it, it's, I always say uh, when someone offers them to me, I say, well, if they mean a lot to your family and you'd like to pass them down, please hang on to them. But if they need a new home, I'm happy to take them and uh, include them or in our displays or pass them on to a new mason. But uh, if you like what you've seen on the channel here, make sure to like the video and subscribe to our page. And you can also follow us on our Facebook page where we will be featuring photos of the items that we talk about along with some further details. Thank you.